Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and you're in for a very special treat because I'm going to be reviewing a family classic that came out on June 7th, 1985, which happens to celebrate its 30th anniversary just a few days ago. And not only that, but it's also a very special tribute to the late, great, and very underrated actress named Mary Ellen Trainer has been best known for all of the films she's been in including the Lethal Weapon films, The Monster Squad, Scrooge, and of course Back to the Future Part 2. It's a movie about a gang of of teenagers and kids you know teaming up together to um, to save the entire uh, houses um, that's already going to be ready to be demolished after not paying any any bills so they can order to become an expansion country club that is until they they spotted a Spanish map that was actually written by a 17th century pirate named One-Eye Willie and it's all set in Astoria, Oregon it's called the Goonies, yep, which is on top right there, yep, The Goonies, and like they said in the movie, The Goonies Never Die, and yes, um, I got the triple feature Blu-ray pack that includes two of my favorite films along with it called The Gremlins and Gremlins 2, The New Batch, yeah. definitely an awesome set that I bought at Walmart during the Black Friday deals. Because I know that um, Warner Brothers did release this on Blu-ray as part of the uh, 25th anniversary edition. It was a huge box set that they used that not only had the movie with all the extras, you know, which is from the previous DVD, of course, but it also had some a lot of good stuff. Probably had a booklet and and even a uh, a magazine article from Empire magazine that features the original cast, you know, all grown up. Yeah, and it's a great film. It's produced by Steven Spielberg, who also created the story. It was written by Chris Columbus, yep, who's been best known for writing the screenplay for Gremlins. Because not only that, he went on to do movies like The Avengers of Babysitting, as well as Home Alone, you know, Harry Potter movies, Mrs. Doubtfire, and, and of course Percy Jackson, and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. That was a great movie. And of course, um, it's directed by Richard Donner, who gave us Superman, as well as the Lethal Weapon movies. So, all three people together to actually create this wonderful and awesome family favorite classic that. I just never get tired of. And it also kind of inspired uh, by many followers that follow this uh, movie, including The Monster Squad, which also featured Mary Ellen Trainer as the mother. But it, it's just a fun movie. And yeah, you can see the Blu ray that I got here. See, you can see the disc of the film. But it had a wonderful soundtrack. It was done by. Um, the score was actually done by David Grusin, who's been best known for composing several films and TV shows. He also composed the TriStar Pictures logo, so I know you're familiar with it, because even some of the themes sound similar. Yeah, those beats. Uh, but they also had some mix in with others, um, so it sort of resembled to, you know, John Williams' score. So yeah, I mean, it, it's just a classic. That, that just never gets old. But anyway, let, let's get right to the review. It stars the Goonies themselves, Sean Astin, Corey Feldman, K. Hyun Kwan from the movie The Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Josh Brolin, you know, who went on to do films such as uh, No Country for Old Man, Jeff Cohn, Carrie Green, who went on to do the film Lucas, and yeah, she was very cute and beautiful. 
sort of like an 80s version of Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Of course, Marfa Plitton, who went on to do the TV show Raising Hope, as well as being in films such as Parenthood and Josh and Sam. And then there's the Fatellis, you know, a family of criminals that's played by Ann Ramsey, you know, who later went on to do the film From Mama from the Train and, of course, Deadly Friend. Joe Patiano, yeah, who's been a lot of stuff, of course. Robert Davey, who later played a villain in the movie License to Kill. It was a James Bond picture. And John Matazek, who played Sloth in this movie. And he was very good in that film. But the others, of course, including, once again, Mary Elizabeth Trainer, Keith Walker, Lupe Antiveros, as well as Alita, Steve Anton, Curtis F. Hansen, Paul Terve, and a cameo appearance by director himself, Richard Donner. Once again, the story is, is written and produced by Steven Spielberg with a screenplay that's done by Chris Columbus and is directed by Richard Donner. The movie began set in the Goondocks area in Astoria, Oregon, which already they're facing a lot of homes being foreclosure and, and ready to be demolished since they couldn't pay all the bills you know, from those two guys. And, and before all this had happened, as we get to the story, a family of criminals known as the Fratellis, all played by Ann Ramsey, Robert Davey, Joe Pantiano, had suddenly uh, escaped from prison during a huge car chase all the way around, where we actually spotted the rest of the Goonies, which includes Mikey Walsh, who's played by Sean Astin, who actually has asthma along with his older brother, Bran, who's basically, you know, li likes to do a lot of exercise, you know, trying to become very strong and everything. He's, I, I believe he's also a football player, too. Not only that, it also includes um, a talkative kid named Mouth, who's played by Corey Feldman. Yeah, because he's been best known for doing his transition in Spanish, you know, because he actually communicated with... Uh, with a, uh, a friend who actually decided to take care of, of the kids while their mother, you know, was played by Mary Ellen Trainor, who actually hurt her arm, you know, during an accident because she was about to leave town. Yeah, and I remember because he was actually, <laughs> actually uh, speaking in Spanish and he was, <laughs> suddenly he's, he's mentioning something about the room actually is filled with drugs and all this other crazy stuff, even the, the, the roaches, which causes Rosalita to feel very confused and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> worried, as well as um, an inventive kid named Data, who's played by Kei Hong Kwan, who basically just has a lot of gadgets that sh that he hits inside his uh, <laughs> his jacket with all the stuff that he needs. Yeah, you know, they he's sort of like the James Bond of of all gadgets. Yeah, they even played a James Bond theme right in the middle of it as he was trying to enter the house. And of course, who couldn't forget the overrate klutz named Chunk, who's played by Jeff Cohen. And yes, who couldn't forget the truffle shuffle that he actually makes once he enters the house. He does like this. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to do it better, but unfortunately Chuck does it more. Well, anyway, they went inside Walsh's attic, where they actually found a lot of stuff that's hidden on top of it. Yeah, they even include the, uh, uh, all these neat uh, swords, all these news articles, and, and everything that they had. Yeah, even the, the electronic globe that they had, where you can actually touch it and your hair starts to <laughs> blow. Anyway, they found... A Spanish treasure map, which is the 1632 Dubloom, that was already framed and it was broken by Chunk, where suddenly they actually found out from a news article about the treasure that was hidden by a famous legendary pirate named 
One Eye Willie. So, and it was being rumored to be hidden nearby, which turned out to be a local restaurant. So then, uh, as the Goonies themselves, only leaving Brant behind, you know, all tied up, decided to race all the way straight to the old restaurant where uh, Mikey started to use the the old skeleton medallion and trying to to locate exactly where the the whole treasure is hidden but meanwhile the Fratellis themselves had one up um, hidden inside their hideout in the restaurant where they already had been spotted by them and that is until you know, his brother Brant decided to escape once um, you know once her mother and and Rosalita actually uh, spotted them, so he got it. You know, he got all tied up, and he wants a bridey on his bike, which sadly he, you know, it's all blown up. So then he stole a girl's bike and tried to race against time. Until suddenly uh, he spotted uh, a jerk named Troy, who was in a car with a cheerleader named Andy, who was played by Kerry Green, along with a nerdy, tough-talking girl. Named Stephanie, who was played by Martha Plitton. So unfortunately, he wants up hanging onto the car, and then suddenly he was flying all the way up <laughs> into it. So he, once again, he's just chasing them around. They actually returned to the restaurant to explore after the Fratellis had left, and they actually had found out that the criminals are actually running a counterfeit operation, which that shows the the machine that actually makes a lot of fifty thousand dollar bills, you know, all you know, paper. And then of course they even discovered inside was a freezer that's filled with ice cream, but Sally spotted a deadly corpse, which I think one of the criminals had killed, and stuck it into the freezer. And as when they tried to escape when the Fratellis came back, they suddenly Chuck wants a inside the freezer along with the dead corpse in there so um, as a result of that um, they decided to actually go underneath the tunnel that they just that Mikey had just discovered and they're trying to offer um, Chunk to actually call for the authorities that the criminals are actually going after them and and the, and the fact that they killed the corpse and everything that is until, um, yeah, once he tried to escape, suddenly he, he's being caught by the Fratellis already inside the car. And then, and then of course, they kidnapped him and into the room where, as we speak, a younger brother who happens to be, who has a fractured face by the name of Sloth, who's played by John Metazak. Yep, and... You know, after he was, uh, he was trying to tell everything about what's going on, and he he is he always mentioning all these lines involving you know what he did when he was a kid, <laughs> you know, actually torturing him by actually putting his hand inside the blender, yeah. But meanwhile, the Goonies themselves had went inside the tunnel to trying to get away from those guys, and actually wants up being inside um, all these various booby traps that one eye Willie had set. Yeah, it's like a huge um, tunnel that they had. And of course, there was that one funny scene where they actually spotted uh, <laughs> the pipes that they just actually spotted and actually started screwing, always making all these noises and screwing them around until suddenly all these uh, the sprinklers and in the showers as well as the toilet yeah, in the bathroom all shoot up with water so it's all screwed up <laughs> especially that scene where Troy was actually sitting down on the toilet all that pressure started to shoot up all the way around like that <laughs> all the way higher <laughs> and he's saying daddy <laughs> oh man that was such a funny scene well, anyway, they, they continue to go on their quest to the journey to find the treasure until they started to spot uh, a wishing well that has all the the coins and such as the pennies, quarters, 
dimes, nickels, uh, half dollar, you name it. Yeah, which, you know, of course, Troy and, and the rest of these goons actually spotted them. <laughs> and then after that, uh, they wound up escaping with all these other adventures. But once again, more booby traps. So once again, they're being chased by the Fratellis all the way after them. While Sloth and, and uh, Chunk was already actually uh, free themselves once uh, Chunk actually gave uh, Sloth a baby roof candy bar. So he broke free and they went over there just to go after the Fratellis and, and save the Goonies for yet another adventure. So they once up going all the way straight to into the uh, into the pirate ship which is known as the Inferno and that's when they spotted lots of skeletons going around after they they try to escape from that uh, the other skeleton that has all these uh, sharp uh, keys so yeah of course so Annie had to play these uh, all these uh, notes that they had from the back of the treasure map before the ground was supposed to was already you know coming right down yeah and, but of course you couldn't forget all these other scenes too where you know they were actually escaping from them from that log and and uh, <laughs> Data started to put all these uh, oil from the, the sh from these sneakers that he had the the Nike sneakers and and suddenly both of them actually f actually uh, hit their crouches <laughs> once they slip on it <laughs> oh that was funny but anyway, back to that though, they finally uh, went inside the pirate ship where they finally spotted the treasure and of course One-Eyed Jack as, and the rest of the pirates, all skeletons. And so they actually had taken all the other treasures that they need while well, they keep some of it for, for One-Eyed Jack and they tried to put it inside the, uh, the marble bag that he had, you know, which includes the rubies and all that. Until the Fratellis once up um, spotted them, and they actually started to set them a trap by by actually uh, having them jump out of the the pirate ship and and actually take over. Until s all of a sudden, Sloth and of course Chuck had came to the rescue to stop the Fratellis, which they had that famous scene where where. <laughs> Where Sloth actually rips off his shirt and it reveals the Superman logo. Yeah, even the theme actually played it too, right in the mix of it. Once uh, Jake and Francis decided to actually uh, tie him up with, with the rope, he actually <laughs> knocks them unconscious and actually tied them up all the way on top. While uh, Akrida, you know, wants up, um, you know, telling him to come here and, and then. He was actually singing the song "Walk Up by Baby" until, <laughs> yeah, until Slav actually brought her up and and dumped her out out into the to the ocean. So they all tried to escape until a huge air trap has been set after after they throw in the the dynamite, yeah, accidentally, and then the whole thing started to explode. And then they and then the the big rock uh, actually blocked their path until. Sloth helped out and had them escape, and then, and once they finally escaped from from there, they, the entire parents as well as uh, the cops and and the uh, the news reporters and all the and of course the people behind the yeah the real estate and and the country club owners, which includes the father, had showed up trying to find out if they're all okay, and yep, they are, and. And of course, the cops had finally found the Fratellis, and they all got arrested. And finally, the once the Lita actually found the marble bag that that has a lot of rubies, you know, and they showed it to them. And then, and then um, their father actually tore up the the paperwork, so they now have enough money to save all their houses from being demolished. So as the Goonies have finally celebrated, they finally saw the pirate ship. The, the inferno clear out to the grotto and drifts away towards the ocean saying its last farewell and then finally the movie ends and I gotta say it's one of the best 
family favorite classics of all time from 1985. And it's definitely one of the greatest. And I never get tired of it because it had a lot of funny lines, a lot of funny scenes, a lot of great stuff that they put into the film. And plus it was beautifully shot, all set in Astoria, Oregon. Because definitely the perfect place to actually film a movie like this. Because it almost felt like they're actually on land. You know? Hard to believe. And yeah, it has a great cast, too. I mean, it's hard to believe that all these actors that we all know and love have went on to do a lot of stuff after this. I mean, Sean Astin went on to do films like Rudy and, and the Lord of the Rings movies. And of course, that terrible um, Encino Man. Corey Feldman, of course, went on to do, which he was already in the film, um, Gremlins. He, he also went, he was also in movies like uh, the Friday the 13th sequel. And then he went on to do other films, especially when he teamed up with his best friend, the late great Corey Haim, with movies like The Lost Boys, License to Drive, uh, and A Dream, A Little Dream, and all these other films that follow. And of course, I know Corey Feldman was in the movie The Burbs with Tom Hanks, yeah, Joe Dante movie. Yeah, and Josh Brolin, of course, went on to do other stuff too. And Kei Hong Kwan, who, who actually originally played Short Round in the movie Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, was really good. Because I, I love all these gadgets that he had, especially when he knocks out one of the bad guys <laughs> and all his other stuff too. This is so hilarious, too. Yeah, Carrie Green, of course, you know, who later went on to do the film Lucas, was sweet, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Morpha Plitton, very good, too, as the nerdy uh, Steph. You know, she was great. Uh, everybody was good in this movie. I'm, I mean, you just can't go wrong with it. It's, it's just so fun. I mean, and it is beautifully shot, too, and I love the composing by Dave Grusin. He did all these great songs that he had, a great score, and also has a very good soundtrack, which includes Sidney Lauper's uh, The Goonies Are Good Enough. I really uh, love that song. Yeah, it had a two-part music video uh, afterwards, too, that's, in, that's on the Blu-ray, as well as the DVD and all the rest. And yeah, I mean this. I mean this is a fun movie. I mean you just never get tired of it, and you would watch this movie over and over and over. And like I said, the Goonies never die. They always will be remembered as the game that saved Astoria, Oregon, from being demolished of all the houses that they live, so they won't want to become an expansion country club because they already have a country club already. I think that's just enough as it is. So they don't need that. Yeah. And they also had some shots of um, the building, which was originally the jail cell that they had. It's actually, uh, yeah, they. it's also part of the Oregon Film Museum now. So I, I was amazed they actually kept it there. And yeah, they also had all, all the looks of the trees and all the settings that they had that looks spectacular because they knew that's exactly how they filmed it and yeah they they lasted five months to film this movie and you wouldn't believe how that five months alone would would make it up for it it's perfect but i'll give you this though i love uh i love chunk though chunk was actually one of my favorite characters of this movie along with mouth and and mikey and of course data but Chuck has always been one of the funniest characters in the film because not only is he fat, but he's also <laughs> he also comes up with some of the best lines in the movie. Um, I know I, I can't think of anything, but you know once you see the movie, you'll know how, how to react to it. So, <laughs> and I, of course the truffle shuffle will always be remembered. And they, I mean, it's just such a fun movie. So definitely check this movie out if you haven't. Buy it on Blu-ray, DVD, VHS, Laserdisc, Beta Tapes, you name it. Because this movie is awesome. So anyway, I give the Goonies 
A very solid and awesomely good time. Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye. Yay!